Yeah, 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 yeah. What up, y'all? It's me. It's Steve back at it again with a new video. Thank you all for tuning in back into the channel, watching this video. If you're new here, hit that sub button down below. We are almost at 1,500 YouTube subscribers. Let's try to get there before the Royal Rumble. Why the hell not? I'm just saying. All right? Why the fuck not? Also, while you're at it, give this video a big old thumbs up because why the fuck not? And if you can, share this video throughout your entire social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, wherever the fuck you watch videos, period. All I'm saying, just share this video, because why the fuck not? And the title below says this will be my WWE Monday Night Raw review recap results for January 15, 2018. Overall, I thought Raw was a meh show. It had some good stuff, but also some... Eh, whatever, if you will. But that's my point of view of the show. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment threads. If you enjoyed the show, whatnot. Or if not, on Twitter, at Heel Steven, where, again, I tweet throughout Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT, pay-per-views in general, or just on a regular daily basis. Because why the fuck not, right? But, uh, let's put it this way, right? On this show tonight, a monster got fired and rehired. Uh, we saw love in wrestling, and we saw a son of a general manager acting silly and controversial to an ending of a main event and the return of a curve stomp. Holy crap. So the show kicked off with Braun Strowman talking about what he did last week, taking out both Kane and Brock Lesnar when he brought down that giant big-ass Tron with the crane, with the hook, if you will. And then out, come, out came Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle it was not happy with what he did last week. He was furious. He pretty much said, hey, you could have cost Kane and Brock's career, and there could have not been any match. But Braun's like, hey, listen, I'll do whatever the hell I want to do, when I want, and how I want to. And at the Royal Rumble, if he wants, he will be, at the end of the day, the Universal Champion, which caused Kurt Angle to say, hey, listen, you're no longer in the match. It will no longer be a triple threat match because Braun Strowman was fired in the opening moment of the show. He got fired by Kurt Angle, which got people in shock. And then again, when you think about this, how many times in wrestling, right, have we seen these angles where someone got fired and got rehired, what have you, the following week or at the end of the show and shit like that. And this caused Braun Strowman to literally, literally lose his shit. When I mean lose his shit, I'm talking going balls to the walls, not giving a flying fuck about what the hell he was going to do. He literally took out security personnel. He went into the production truck and scared the living hell out of everybody. I literally thought he was going to molest Kevin Dunn like Heidenreich did to Michael Cole back in 05. I literally thought that for a minute. And I, probably, I think everyone, right, wanted to see Braun Strowman just destroy Kevin Dunn. Because why the fuck not, right? Because Kevin Dunn is supposed to be this little weasel. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, and then he took, I guess, the tractor or whatever the hell it was off the production truck or he literally then went on to put move, like tilt over the truck part wherever the production truck was on and Kurt Angle was begging not to do it what have you um, then he went to catering put Kurt Angle to a table ate a piece of cake just literally going crazy until Kurt Angle decided to hey you know what you're rehired Stephanie McMahon told me to rehire you, and you're added back to the match. But that didn't stop Braun Strowman. No, 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 no. He then grabbed Michael Cole, and he tossed Michael Cole through the security people that were literally at the bottom of the uh, little tight of, of the ramp area. And out came Tom Phillips to take over for Michael Cole. And that was literally the first hour of Raw. Again, they, they had matches in between, but that was literally the first hour of Raw. Braun Strowman just having his way with literally everyone. Because again, we wanted to see who was going to get those hands of Braun Strowman. And it got the same time, you know, giving people, giving, I guess in this situation, Braun Strowman that momentum. That, you know, feel that, hey, at the Rumble... He could possibly end up winning the match. I think for a lot of people, that's what people want to see. They want to see Braun Strowman be the one to go out there and win the championship. But reality is not going to happen. I'm sorry. 
But again, they want to give you that hope. Hey, he can do it. Maybe he won't. Oh, yeah, but you kind of get the gist, right? We then had Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews versus The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. A rematch from last week because fuck it, why not? You remember last week when Apollo Crews and Titus O'Neil got that fluke win, right? And this match for what it was, it was an okay match for what it was. It was there to kick off the show. People were impressed, as always, by Cesaro and Sheamus. Apollo Crews did his regular backflip that he does, that he normally does on a daily basis. Um... Somewhere in this match, it seemed like the bar were going to get the win back. And out came Jason Jordan for no fucking reason. Right? And so, and Seth Rollins like, what are you doing? Because he comes out as well. And this caused Apollo Crews to roll up. I believe it was Cesaro for the 1-2-3. And oh my god, a shocker. But again, all because of Jason Jordan. Like, it's one of those things where, like, dude, yeah, I get it. You're part of the tag team champion, what have you. But it's just so childish, almost like it's so like naive, like bullshit, if you will. Where yeah, here's Seth Rollins, who's the veteran, right? And he has to like look out for Jason Jordan, almost. What it kind of looks like, if you think about it, right? <laughs> but that was that opening match of the show. We then had Enzo Amore come out with Tony Nese, as Tony Nese took on Cedric Alexander, who came out with Goldust. The match for what it was, it was okay. Okay? For what it was. And to be honest, I wish they had more time. That's just me, of course. Uh, granted, yet they're still using gold dust to get people to tune into 205 Live. They get eyeballs on the Cruiserweight division. Um, but at the end of it all, when it's all said and done, Cedric Alexander got the win with the lumbar check over Tony Nice. Also hyping up their... Cruiserweight Championship match at the Royal Rumble between Cedric Alexander and Enzo Amore. Because, again, why the hell not? And, like I was saying earlier, we went back and forth in camera angles here with Braun Strowman going to the production truck, going to catering, just having his whole, like, rampage, if you will, right? Because, again, that's fucking Braun Strowman for you. Um, we had Asuka versus Nia Jax in a one on one match. A match where it seemed like, hey, by logic here, Nia Jack was supposed to win. It didn't turn out that way. Asuka got the win via technical stoppage, if you will, because apparently in this match, Nia Jax fucked up her knee. Now, whether it's real, whether it was a work, we don't know. I think it was a work, but let's put it this way, right? If not, if Asuka would have beaten Nia Jax, which she's done before NXT, okay? But if she wouldn't be, in, if, if she would have beaten her one on one here, people online would have complained. Ah, oh, how does small Oscar beat Nia Jack? It's such bullshit. It's all crap. Listen, what this does in a way, it protects Nia from not getting pinned, and it also it, it protects Oscar's undefeated streak. I still don't know why or why is Alexa Bliss versus Oscar not a match at the Royal Rumble. I just don't understand why. But things happen for a reason. It is what it is. But that's what I think they did all that for. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, Oscar's still undefeated. And Alexa Bliss was at ringside during this thing, whole, whole thing as well. And, well, she came out ringside after the match to check up on Nia Jax. But eh, it is what it is with that. We had The Revival versus uh, Aaron Solo and Ricky Stark, two local guys. The Revival got the win, obviously. With the Shatter Machine, and they cut a promo after them because Charlie Caruso once again coming out doing the post match interview. And she asked him about who will they face at the 25th anniversary of Raw because, again, next week is Raw 25, right? And they go on to say that, hey, listen, they'll take on anybody, any legend, doesn't matter because they're not sports entertainers. They are wrestlers, and they're going to set the tone for the next 25 years. I thought that was cool. I thought, again, they're back, better than ever, so you want to get that message across, so why the fuck not, right? Um, we had Elias play a song to introduce The Miz and The Mistourage. And Miz says that his return last week felt awesome. Because it kind of did, right? It felt awesome. And he called out Roman Reigns. And it was a handicap match tonight between The Mistourage, Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, and Roman Reigns. And he wanted to talk about it next week at Raw 25th Anniversary. How he will beat 
Roman Reigns at the Barclays Center. So we know now that Roman Reigns will not step into the ring at the Manhattan Center. I guess he's safe for that, but eh, it is what it is. This match, honestly, let's be real about it. Though a lot of people were rooting for the Misturage, but it was all said and done. The big dog, Roman Reigns, the Intercontinental Champion, got the win, which made a lot of sense because, hey, he's going into a championship match next week, so you want to give Roman some momentum as well. So there you go with that. We then had Sonya Deville, right? Sonya Deville versus Sasha Banks in a match that was short. Paige came out. At, people thought Paige was going to announce her retirement tonight because, again, the reports of her being hurt, her being injured, and WWE doctors may not clear her. People thought, hey, tonight might be the night where she announced retirement. No, it didn't come out. didn't turn out that way. It looks like she'll be a manager going forward, but we'll see. This match, again, was a short match. People thought Sasha was going to win. I thought so, too. But being that last week, Sasha Banks made Mandy Rose tap out, you got to do the whole reverse 50-50 booking here. Having one of the members of Absolution, being Sonya Deville, get the upset win over Sasha Banks after Sasha jumped off the top rope and Sonya Deville countered with a kick, right? Not to the back of the head, but the front of the head. Well, even though Sasha blocked it, but still. For the one, two, three, and Sonya Deville beat Sasha Banks. Let's be real about it. No one saw that coming, but it is what it is. Uh, we also found out the latest inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. We're the first inductee. I'm not saying late. The first inductee of the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2018. That being the former WCW World Champion. Former WCW United States Champion. Former WWE World Champion, former WWE Universal Champion, Bill Goldberg. The first inductee, even though news about, news about this came out early in the day through ESPN, Fox Sports. You kind of get the gist, right? Like, every time they induct someone onto the Hall of Fame, they'll talk about it. They'll, you'll hear about it early in the day through all these news outlets, and then WWE will let you know about it. Listen, my take on Goldberg going in, listen. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it because he does deserve to be put in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Okay? Goldberg, to me as a kid, was one of my favorite wrestlers to watch in WCW. Here's a guy that went out there. He had this badass entrance. Like the it made you feel like a fight. He went out there escorted by security guards. And he went out there. There's literally a spear and a jackhammer. Or in this case, like a brain buster, if you will. Just, again, just beat the fuck out of everybody in front of him, right? He, and you think about it, well, again, was one of the big stars in WCW. Growing up as a kid, that's what I always felt like. You know, and then he came to WWE back in 03. He had a short run, won the world title, and then didn't really do much, you know? And as I got older, I got to watch some of his stuff in WWE. It's like, eh, it wasn't the same anymore. You come to realize, like, eh, this guy in matches was just there. He was just more of a show than anything. He was just like an entrance, and that's it. And there's two moves. That's what I got to realize as I got older, you know. But again, I'm not, I'm not taking, I'm not taking anything away from him. I again, he deserved to be, he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. But there's other people that I feel that should have, that should have gone in before. But at the same time, for a lot of people, the WWE Hall of Fame is an awesome thing and then for some people it's a joke think about it we have fucking um uh freaking coco beware in the hall of fame you have uh, drew you have fucking drew carey drew fucking carey in your hall of fame come on and donald trump just saying okay take that for what it's worth but again if you're happy that goldberg's in the hall of fame awesome i guess good for you guys uh congrats nonetheless and let's see who inducts him? I get the feeling, though, Brock Lesnar will be the one to induct Bill Goldberg in the Hall of Fame. That's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. It is what it is. Uh, we had Matt Hardy versus Heath Slater. This match was weird, if anything. We had a Rhino at ringside trying to encourage Heath Slater to get into the match because Matt was beating the hell out of him, doing weird stuff, weird antics here. But when it's all said and done, of course, Matt Hardy won with a twist of fate. Um... Again, one thing about this too, which was good, there was no Bray Wyatt. There was none of this whole laughing matter, what have you. So that was good to see. Then we get the main event of the evening. We had 
Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. Apparently, this match was made because apparently Jason Jordan requested Kurt Angle to make the match so Seth can get his redemption. Right? Even though Seth wasn't happy how Jason Jordan did it. But the match happened nonetheless. And it wasn't a bad match. It was actually a very good match. Back and forth. You had um, Jason Jordan at ringside in the corner of Rollins. And you had Gallus and Anderson in the corner of Finn Balor. Right? And literally also the battle of the Sling Blade. But when it was all said and done during this match, um, out came the bar. To pretty much distract Seth Rollins. And because remember, early in the night, Jason Jordan distracted Cesaro and Sheamus, right? And I guess they try to like surround Jason Jordan, and Jordan dips, and there's a brawl between Cesaro and Sheamus and Gallows and Anderson. They're all brawling between each other and shit. And Ballard does the dive for the tope on all of them and gets back into the ring, gets hit with a curb stomp. For all of this, right? It's hit with a curb stomp. Because apparently also in this match as well, uh, Jason Jordan grabbed the foot of, of Finn Balor, which caused the curb stomp to happen off of that. So yes, we saw the return of the curb stomp after how long? After how many? After how long of Rollins using the pedigree? And ended up beating Finn Balor for the 1-2-3. And that's how Raw ended pretty much. With Finn Balor just sitting there wondering what the fuck happened because he got hit with the curb stomp. And hopefully, hopefully, hopefully here again, Finn Balor ends up keeping, I bet Seth Rollins ends up keeping the curb stomp, but we'll see where that goes. I almost say this too, I know at the Royal Rumble, we're getting, you know, Rollins and Jason Jordan versus Cesaro and Sheamus. A part of me really hopes they make it a fatal four-way for the sake of, hey, you know, uh, Apollo Crews and Tyler Sanuk has been getting wins over the bar who are supposed to be next in line for the tag titles at the Rumble, and also for the club and Anderson and Gallows, you have that mix in there, and you can have an all-out match. I'm just saying, right? Because I'll be real about it. Amongst the two tag team title matches at the Rumble, I look more forward to Gable and Benjamin versus the Usos. That's just me, of course. Take it for what it's worth, all right? But nonetheless, Raw tonight was a mixed show. There was some good, and then there was some eh. But nonetheless, guys, give me thoughts down below in the comment thread of this video. Your thoughts on Raw tonight, if you enjoyed it or not. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. Make sure you like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, it's me, it's Steve, and I'm out. Yeah, yeah, wrestling and whatever. Yeah, yeah.